it's time to go over the solution to the first weekly math challenge of the year 2018. And the first person to answer this question was Alien in Disguise with the correct answer, of course, of 2018. And we will now endeavor to solve this question and it's evaluating this crazy looking limit. And one of the first things you may say is that maybe we can connect this. Maybe we can connect this limit with definite integral, with the limit definition of definite integral. And for those of you not familiar with the limit definition of definite integral, but you, if you do know what definite integral is, but you're just not familiar with the limit definition, I will share the definition with you really quickly with a quick example. So let's say you wish to find integral from 0 to 2 of a function x squared dx. Of course, you can anti-differentiate x squared and use the change from 0 to 2 to evaluate this integral. But instead, I'm going to try to do it using the limit definition. So let's think about our function x squared from 0 to 2. So from 0 to 2. And we wish to find this area underneath. And one way of doing it is by dividing this 0 to 2 into n sub-intervals. We are dividing it into a bunch of intervals and we are going to create a bunch of rectangles. So that's a rectangle, that's a rectangle, that's a rectangle, that's a rectangle, and so on. So let's say we have n rectangles. So we are dividing the interval from 0 to 2, so this interval, into n of them. So each of the, each rectangle, given that they have the same width, is going to have width of n of 2 over n, because you're dividing 2 into n pieces. So each of these widths is equal to 2 over n, and since you have n of them, they add up to 2, as they should. So we know width of these rectangles, so we know width is equal to 2 over n, and what else do we know? What do we know about the height? Well, we know this first value is 2 over n, then we have 4 over n, then we have 6 over n, and so on until we have 2n over n, or just 2, and we are plugging these into our function. So one way of thinking about the sum of the areas of the rectangles, so sum of the areas of rectangles, realize that this thing is not equal to the area under the curve. It's not equal to this integral that we want to find. But it's a it's an approximation, and from this approximation, we are going to take the limit to find the exact value of this definite integral. So before we take the limit, let's think about what the sum of the areas is. Well, we are summing it up from the first interval, so k equals 1 to nth interval, and we immediately realize that we have something similar going on up top. But let's continue looking at this question. And we have, we have areas of rectangle, and since area of a rectangle is base times height, we want to multiply the width or width times length. We want to multiply the width, which is 2 over n, by the height, and our height changes. At first, our height is 2 over n squared, then we have 4 over n squared, then 6 over n squared, and so on. So we have 2k over n squared. And so we know this thing is equal to sum of the areas of rectangles. We start at k equals to 1, so we have 2 over n squared, 4 over n squared, all the way to 2n over n, or 2 squared, for the height of the rectangle. So this thing is gi giving us the sum of the areas of n rectangles, and how can we find the actual, actual limiting value from this? Well, think about it like this. Let's say you have two rectangles. So if you have two rectangles, your approximation is going to be very rough. It's not going to be very close. But if you have 20 rectangles, if you have 20 rectangles, then your approximation for this area is going to be pretty close. So as we have more and more rectangles, so as the number of rectangles increases to infinity, we should have we should be able to find the actual area under the curve or this definite integral. So we know this integral is equal to the limit as we have infinitely many rectangles of the sum of the areas of the rectangles that's width and that's height. And by using this, we are going to solve this question. What I'm going to do, we are going to write both of these 
both of these summation and limit as 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 limiting value of this Riemann sum. This the sum of the areas of rectangles written like this. That's called the Riemann sum. So we will write down two Riemann sums and take limits of them, or we will. So because usually definite integral is easier to evaluate than this crazy limit, we are going to go from limit to definite integral, and we are going to evaluate the definite integral to find our answer. So let's look exactly at how that's going to work out. Let's look at the first part, limit as n approaches infinity of this summation, and we have craziness going on. Before we do anything with the actual summation part, let's focus on log base 2 of e to the n over 11. So log base 2 of e to the n over 11's power. Well, since in the, in the logarithm using property, this n over 11 is a power, so you can bring it out as constant multiple. So you have n over 11 times log base 2 of e, and the log base 2 of e is equal to 1 over log base e of 2. And you may say, why? How, how am I going from log base 2 of e to 1 over log base e of 2? So let me prove this really quickly. So let's say log base 2 of e is equal to some value x. Then we know 2 to the x is equal to e, just writing this in exponential notation, and taking log base e of both sides, so taking log base e of both sides, we have log base e of 2 to the x, this x can go out, so we have x times log base e of 2 is equal to log base e of e, which is 1. So we have our x, our x being equal to 1 over log base e of 2. So realize these two are actually the same thing. So using that, we have n over 11 times 1 over log base e of 2. And you may ask, why am I doing this? Why am I writing this with natural log instead of log base 2? And that's because in calculus, in differentiation and integration, it is easier for us to simplify natural log than things with log base 2. So we have, we have, what do we have? Let's go back to the given expression. We have 1 over this. We have 1 over log base e, 2 of e to the n over 11. So we had 1 over this expression to begin with. So we have 1 over this expression. So what do we have? Let's write this to the, to the right. We have a limit as n approaches infinity of sum from k equals to 10 to n plus 9 of 2 to the 11 k minus 9 over n. That's 11. Let's make sure it doesn't look like uh, it doesn't look like 7 or some other thing. And we have 1 over log base 2 of e to the n over 11's power. So we are basically flipping this. We are doing 1 over this quantity. So we are going to get 11 over n. We are going to get 11 over n. And we have natural log of 2 because log base e of 2 is natural log of 2. And we are flipping it upside down. So we have this limit. And this looks very, very similar to what we used to have. But to make it even more similar, we can do one more thing. Since this n plus 9 is kind of annoying in a way, we can forcibly change that to just n, because n looks more clean than n, pl n plus 9 as the upper limit of summation. And since n plus 9 changed to n, k equals to 10 has to change to k equals to 1, we gotta subtract 9. And what happens to the summation inside? We have 2 to the 11th power, and we have some quantity divided by n, 11 over n, natural log of 2. Well, what, what, what was happening? When k was equal to 10, so for the starting value of k, so for the first value of k in the summation, so first starting value of k in the summation, we had to get k minus 9 or 10 minus 9 or 1. So for the starting value of k, to, for us to have the corresponding sum, we have to get value of 1 inside this parenthesis for k equals to 1. And simply, they can be obtained by just putting k right there. So k minus 9 inside is going to change to k. And what do we have? Now we have something exactly, almost exactly the same as what we had for integral from 0 to 2 of x squared. So let me, let me copy this, because this seems very important. So let's copy this, and let's paste it right there, just for the sake of comparison. We know this thing is equal to integral from 0 to 2 of x squared dx. So now let's make the comparison. 
instead of going from 0 to 2, now we're going to go from 0 to 11, because instead of having 2 over n and 2k over n, we have 11 over n and 11k over n. And we have, and that's our width, that's our width of a rectangle. And what is our height of the rectangle? What is the function? Well, the function in this case was x squared. Think of 2k over n as being our x. In our case, 11k over n, because we are going from 0 to 11, is essentially x. So this entire thing is x. So our function is 2 to the x, and we also have natural log of 2 dx. And that's simply 2 to the x, because when you differentiate 2 to the x, we get 2 to the x times natural log of 2, and we are going from 0 to 11, which is 2 to the 11 minus 2 to the 0, 20, 48 minus 1, or 20, 47. So we have figured out the left part of this summation. This thing is 20, 47. Now let's evaluate the right side of this summation. Let me copy this. For this one, let's start by factoring out 58 over pi. And of course, we I forgot to copy the limit. We have limit as n approaches infinity. So we have limit as n approaches infinity of the summation from k equals to 0 to n minus 1. And we have 1 over square root of n minus k times n plus k. And let's go back. Let's go back to what we had to do for x squared. We want to write this in terms of things like 2 over n, 3 over n, 4 over n, or 11 over n. So we want one of those factors to pop in into our expression if we want to write this in terms of definite integral. So how can we? You may think, you may look at this 1 over this square root of n minus k times n plus k and realize the connection with inverse sine function, connection with arc sine function. So differentiating arc sine function, if you remember from calculus 1, gets you 1 over square root of 1 minus x squared. And you, you may ask, why would I even think of this to begin with? Well, first of all, we have expressions similar to 1 over 1 minus x squared. We have 1 over square root of 1 over square root of n squared minus k squared down below using, dif using difference of squares. And this looks pretty close to 1 minus x squared. And since we want to have terms like 2 over, 11, 2 over n, 11 over n, 4 over n, 1 over n to pop into our expression, we know if it's 2 over n, we're going from 0 to 2. We know if it's 11 over n, we're going from 0 to 11 in our integral. So we want to have one of those pop in into our expression. And one way of doing it is by factoring n squared out of this bottom expression. So we have 58 over pi. You know, let's, why don't we just treat this separately? So let's look at this right here. Let's factor out n squared, and we have n squared times 1 minus k squared over n squared. And that's equal to 1 over square root of n squared is n, because n is positive, n is number of rectangles. And we have square root of 1 minus k squared over n squared, and we have it. We have 1 over n popping into our expression. We have 1 over n right here. And we have function 1 over square root of 1 minus x squared. In, in this case, x is k over n. So we have the same thing going one more time. And in this case, it's left Riemann sum instead of right Riemann sum. Anyway, so we have integral from 0 to 1 in this case of 1 over square root of 1 minus x squared dx. And we know that's simply arc sine, 58 over pi, arc sine of x. So let's make sure I write arc fully. So arc sine or inverse sine of x from 0 to 1. Inverse sine at 1, so 58 over pi, not 5 pi. I keep on making this mistake. Arc sine of 1 is pi over 2. Arc sine of 0 is 0. So we simply get pi over 2. Multiplying it out gets us 29. So we know, we know the second part, the second expression, the second expression is 29. So our final answer, our final answer is 2047 minus 29, which is, of course, 2018.